Bol and Hannibal, their connection and place of worship. Introduction. The ancient world was rich with complex deities and historical figures whose stories interwove with cultural, religious, and political life. Bol, a prominent deity in ancient Semitic religions, and Hannibal, the famed Carthaginian general, are to such figures. Though separated by time and nature, their connections lie in the shared cultural and religious heritage of the Carthaginian civilization. Bol, the deity. Origins and characteristics. Bol, a title meaning lord or owner, was a major god in the ancient Near Eastern religions, particularly among the Canaanites and Phoenicians. Bol was associated with fertility, weather, rain, and agriculture. Often depicted as a powerful storm god wielding a thunderbolt, the worship of Bol was widespread, with numerous regional variations, each attributing different aspects and epithets to the deity. Worship and rituals: the worship of Bol included various rituals and offerings, often performed to ensure agricultural fertility and prosperity. Temples dedicated to Bol were common in cities. And high places, hilltops were frequently used for sacrifices and religious ceremonies. Notable practices included burnt offerings and, in some historical contexts, more controversial rites such as child sacrifices. Hannibal, the general. Historical context: Hannibal Barca, born into 47 BCE in Carthage, modern-day Tunisia, was a renowned military commander during the Second Punic War against Rome. He is best known for his audacious crossing of the Alps with his army, including war elephants, and his subsequent victories in Italy. Cultural and religious influences. Hannibal hailed from a culture deeply influenced by Phoenician heritage, where the worship of Bol and other deities like Tanit played a significant role. As a member of the Barsid family, Hannibal's upbringing would have been steeped in Carthaginian religious traditions, which revered Bol as a central figure. Connection between Bol and Hannibal, religious dedication. Hannibal's connection to Bol, emblematic of the broader Carthaginian society's devotion to this deity. Historical sources suggest that the Carthaginians, including Hannibal, sought divine favor and guidance through religious rituals and sacrifices. It is likely that Hannibal, as a prominent leader, participated in. And perhaps even led ceremonies dedicated to Bol to seek success and protection in his military campaigns. Symbolic representation: Bol, as a god of storms and war, symbolized the power and resilience that Hannibal embodied in his military endeavors. The deity's characteristics of strength and dominance in battle resonated with Hannibal's own strategies and determination to challenge Rome. Place of worship: Carthage, cultural hub. Carthage, founded by Phoenician settlers from Tyre, became a major center of commerce and culture in the Mediterranean. The city inherited and adapted the religious practices of its Phoenician founders, prominently featuring the worship of Bol and Tanit, the chief deities. Temples and sacred sites. Carthage housed several temples dedicated to its principal gods. The Temple of Eshmun. Often associated with Bol Hammon, a form of Bol worshipped in Carthage, was a significant religious site. The Tophet of Carthage, an open-air sanctuary, also served as a place of ritualistic importance, where archaeological evidence suggests sacrifices, including the controversial child offerings, were made to Bol and Tanit. The Hannibal Directive, origin and purpose, introduced in 1986. The Hannibal Directive was formulated in response to several abductions of IDF soldiers by hostile forces in Lebanon, which had led to highly contentious prisoner exchanges. The directive's primary objective is to prevent the capture of soldiers at all costs, even if it means risking their lives. The core principle is encapsulated in the phrase: "The kidnapping must be stopped by all means, even at the price of striking and harming our own forces." Operational guidelines. Under the Hannibal Directive, if an IDF soldier is at imminent risk of abduction, forces are authorized to use overwhelming firepower to thwart the capture. This includes attacking the abductor's vehicles or strongholds, potentially harming or killing the kidnapped soldier 
to prevent them from being used as a bargaining chip in future negotiations. The directive underscores the IDF's commitment to the ethos of never leaving a soldier behind and preventing the strategic and psychological advantages that enemy forces might gain from such captures. Connection to Hannibal of Carthage. Historical background of Hannibal. Hannibal Barker 247 to 183 BCE was a Carthaginian general famed for his tactical prowess and his audacious campaign against Rome during the Second Punic War. His ability to inspire and lead his troops across challenging terrains and his strategic acumen in battles like Cannae made him a legendary military figure. Symbolic significance. The name Hannibal for the directive symbolizes strategic ruthlessness and unwavering resolve in the face of adversity. Just as Hannibal's strategies were aimed at crippling Rome's military might through audacious and sometimes brutal tactics, the Hannibal Directive embodies a similar ruthlessness in the context of modern military doctrine. It reflects the extreme measures deemed necessary to prevent the enemy from gaining leverage through the capture of IDF soldiers. Conclusion The intertwining of Bull and Hannibal's narratives illustrates the profound influence of religion and cultural heritage on Carthaginian society. Paul, as a central deity, represented power, fertility, and resilience, which resonated deeply with the Carthaginian people and their leaders, including Hannibal Barker. Hannibal's military strategies and his dedication to the Carthaginian gods underscore the significant role that religious devotion played in shaping historical events and personal legacies. Similarly, the Hannibal Directive of the IDF, named after the famed general, reflects the strategic ruthlessness and unwavering resolve emblematic of Hannibal's legacy. This directive, aimed at preventing the capture of soldiers at any cost, underscores the modern military's reliance on historical and cultural symbols to inspire and justify their tactics. While controversial, the Hannibal Directive highlights the lengths to which a military force might go to protect its soldiers and prevent enemy leverage, mirroring the high stakes and harsh realities of ancient warfare. In summary, the connection between Bol and Hannibal, and the modern usage of Hannibal's name in military doctrine, underscores a timeless theme, the interplay between religion, culture, and military strategy. This interplay continues to shape Jewish societies and their approaches to conflict, reflecting a legacy that spans from ancient Carthage to contemporary Jewish military practices.